a majority of our body is water and that means water will be required if humanity has to exist in space. Now ISRO in its manifesto which where they have talked about long distance long duration space flights and space missions they have also talked about developing water monitoring systems so that they can carry they can sustain and they can create water sources in space. Now to make that happen ISRO as well as multiple space agencies are uh, racing against time to develop sources. Now it all boils down to one thing that space has enormous minerals. Those minerals can be used in creating better products in the world and that is the reason there is a space race and uh, ISRO it doesn't want to be left behind and that is where space biology is going to take a center step because the moment you have a mineral detection you'll have to send humans to get them or probably robots to get them. So to start with monitoring water quality in long distance uh, space flights what exactly is required. Now first things first you need an in-flight identification and quantification of water species. Now what do I mean by that? So water itself has a lot of microbes right even if it is distilled or uh, in a sanitary environment still it can grow a lot of uh, species. So in-flight identification and quantification of water species is the goal that's the first approach under this. The first uh, sub approach under this will be development of equipment. You develop an equipment which will initiate the automatic detection of these species. The second will be to apply this. So it should be automatic. Immense application will be there so that uh, in long duration flights, water quality can be auto checked so that potable water is available all the time, drinkable water is available all the time for the astronauts. Then obviously evaluating the data that what kind of water species are getting uh, born in this kind of environment and how to make sure that doesn't happen. So data evaluation and then mitigation technique. How can we uh, keep the water intact for a longer period of time? Development of mitigation technique for observed ill effect effects can further enhance the safety and quality of uh, crew members because we don't have a hospital in space. So if any crew member falls sick because of the water not being uh, drinkable or some water species has uh, grown in that, that that will be something which obviously we don't want. So that is where ISRO has come up with this particular agenda. Now this obviously involves testing apparatus and setups. So apparatus development, test setups and data analysis. So as a biologist you can be involved in this kind of a research and very soon you'll start seeing projects under this category as well. So anybody who is a MSc microbiology this is the right time to go for a PhD microbiology and wait for ISRO to come up with these kind of projects and you can jump in and you can make a long term career in Indian space research organization. So that's an amazing opportunity for all of you. So now coming to the next approach, what will be the benefits of species identification and quantification? The first benefit will be the crew or the astronaut will be healthy. So that is the first. The so second will be environmental monitoring. So if we are monitoring the quality of water, suppose in future we want to grow plant. So if the unwanted water bodies or the water species are there, they can also grow. So we can prevent that. And of course, this presents a excellent research opportunities for all of you right now because it's in the seed stage. This idea is right now in the seed stage and in future it is going to grow. Now in future, we are planning for interplanetary travel. We are planning for space stations and uh, obviously with the success of Chandrayaan 3 you will see more resource being allocated for this kind of funding. Now what this kind of uh, research entails, it, it entails experiment designing. So obviously you should learn how to design experiment, data gathering skills that you should have. So gathering data and of course data analysis and interpretation skills. So you're going to generate data and then you're going to interpret data and come up with your own research papers. So you, this is what you're going to do. Now you will also be working on improving the accuracy of the existing techniques which exist. For example, NASA has already got a technique or uh, other uh, space agencies has got their own techniques. So what if you could improve the uh, you know accuracy and efficiency of those tests? So that's something you can do. Then you can also uh, look at the challenges which uh, the current system faces like the equipment can have a limitation like it, when it goes into zero gravity it may not perform the way it performs on earth. So that testing also you can do. You can also look at the costing and maintenance. For example, you could create an equipment but now that equipment is uh, 
very costly and it requires heavy maintenance in the space environments. So obviously, ISRO will not take up. So if you, even if you are a freelancer or a, a private consultant, you can start thinking in this direction that, okay, if, what if I create this and sell it to ISRO or patent it and sell the patent to ISRO? Imagine what kind of um, great uh, results you can get. So now, uh, what is the future direction of your research? In this, uh, you can have you can develop new sensors which can be immersed in water it can continuously monitor you can do a lot of data mining in uh, so anybody who is into microbiology or oceanography marine uh, research they can be there is also a lot of collaborative research opportunities here where you can collaborate with nasa you can coll collaborate with european japanese and russian space agencies and of course uh, this will lead to a better uh, technique which will also help us monitor the growth of water uh, species in our current earth environment also. Also, this will also help us to create a protocol for emergency response. Suppose water body starts, uh, water uh, species starts generating in these uh, water reservoirs which we have in space. So, uh, how to stop uh, and how to have an emergency response protocol so that we can prevent it from happening. So this is where uh, it all comes down to the future of uh, water monitoring and water, uh, you know, this prevention of uh, water species is going to be a huge challenge. And that is where you as a scientist come into picture. Remember, space may have a lot of minerals, but space may not have a lot of water sources. And that means longer storage and carrying of water is important for a human to survive in space and for that to happen we need microbiologists we need people like you who can make this happen so this was the second approach today about isro's uh, manifesto where they have talked about long term water um, storage and uh, monitoring systems and uh, international space station already has something like this but uh, ISRO wants to develop it indigenously and that means you can come in and work with ISRO. Now, for those who keep saying that there is no future in scope of biology, wait for ISRO to place a man on moon or Mars or International Space Station, you will realize how many projects they keep coming up with in the biological sector. It is just that our country is a developing country so obviously the budgetary constraints are always there but if in 74 million dollars isro can place its uh, chandrayaan 3 on moon imagine how cost efficient we indians are and how smart we are so all you have to do is prepare yourself if you are in a bachelor's or master's prepare yourself for this day when isro starts coming up with the space biological research initiative and that day you can be a part of Indian Space Research Organization. With these thoughts, I'll see you soon in the next video in this series. Till then, please take care. Bye-bye.